Hi everyone, good morning. Right, a uh, pleasure to be here. So, a lot to unpack, very exciting topic. And let me start by saying that IBM continues to push the frontier of computing. Right, IBM has always been at the forefront of you know, uh, technology and you know, we've been working on bits, we have been working on neurons, and now we're working on qubits. So, let me walk you through a journey of what IBM Quantum, I, I mean, IBM is doing in the area of quantum technologies, both on the computing side as well as the, on the quantum safe side. So, one of the first things that IBM right, wants to do right, is to bring useful quantum computing to the world. Right? We don't just want to solve any math problem, we want to bring business value right, of the technology to the industry. And for those of you that is Heard, you have heard about quantum, right? That's great, right? But those of you that have not heard about quantum, a quantum computer is not a faster CPU. It's not a more powerful GPU. It's a completely different paradigm of computing using quantum mechanical properties like superposition, entanglement, inference, right? And while quantum computers will not solve a lot of today's classical problem, it's not meant to be, Right, but it's going to be potentially very powerful in terms of solving a lot of the business problems that cannot be solved today by the world's most powerful supercomputer and perhaps never be able to be solved by the world's most powerful supercomputer right, around the areas of simulation of nature, like chemistry, machine learning in some areas, and search and optimization, right, which is so powerful right, in the industry today. So these are the areas that quantum computing potentially could be of value and literally you can say that this is almost every industry right and perhaps a few examples right in the areas of banking it could be fraud detection in the areas of supply chain logistics it could be large-scale optimization in the areas of oil and gas it could be better catalysis and carbon sequestrations which is so much so important to sustainability and this is a chart by BCG and it's basically saying that between now and 2027, we expect about 50% compound annual growth rate, which is a phenomenal number. And we expect enterprises to continue to adopt this uh, technology at multiple times, right, the next couple of years as well. Right, so tremendous growth, right, we expect out of this uh, technology. I often get asked the question, right, so when is the quantum computer actually going to come? But actually, IBM has all has already been offering quantum technologies since 2016 via the crowd, right, for researchers to be using. And today, most of our customers have been using right, uh, our quantum technologies through a crowd API. And for those that desire right, to have your own on-prem uh, quantum computer, this is what it looks like. Right? This is the world's most powerful uh, quantum computer in the world today. Right? It's a um, uh, 399 qubits, right, consisting of 3 times 133 uh, Heron chip, right, as you can see in the, uh, the animation there, right, and, and we expect to deploy more of these technologies, right, um, in the future. So let me walk you through uh, a little bit of our eye chart, right, this is a quantum uh, development roadmap that we published in 2019, right, and this is a very important uh, publication, right, because uh, we've been hearing a lot of noise in the industry and we wanted to give our customers absolute clarity in terms of when, what technology we deploy in what time frame because businesses and governments need clarity in terms of planning right, uh, in the adoption of this technology. So let me walk you through the bottom half of the chart first. Right? The bottom half of the chart basically lays out our uh, hardware development roadmap. Right? And you can see that uh, in green marks, right, we've been delivering exactly to uh, what we'll be committing to. Right, today we are in 2024, right, we have the Heron chip, right, 133 qubits multiplied by 3 to, forgive, to give you 399 qubits that you'll hear in the announcement in a couple of weeks. Right, and in fact, we have already deployed the 156 qubit right, Flamingo chip right, in our uh, Poughkeepsie and Germany data center, quantum data center. So we are in fact a little bit ahead of our schedule. And you have full confidence that we will continue to deliver to this roadmap. It's a moment of pride that we put that green chip chat box Right, uh, every year in the milestone. On the upper, let me, let me continue a little bit more, right, um, on the hardware development roadmap. 
um, you'll continue to see um, progress right uh, through 2025 to 2027 right we expect to get to thousands of qubits right but the real critical point is at 2029 when we expect to have a fully error corrected fault tolerant quantum computer right and that's where you know industries can really expect to achieve quantum advantage in a lot of their business problems that they have today so in the upper half of the roadmap, right, is the software uh, development roadmap. IBM remains one of the very few companies in the world that has both the hardware and software stack of quantum technologies. Um, and for the first couple of years, right, uh, you know, quantum physicists are really the ones that's touching the technology, right. But we've been working hard at abstracting the the, the difficulty, right, of programming a quantum computer, right, up to the researcher level. Right, and in 2024, we also um, announced the AI code assistant, right, so that even data scientists today should be able to take advantage of this technology. And we'll continue to see further abstractions, right, so that you know, it, it, this technology becomes even easier, right, uh, in terms of uh, industry use and adoption. In the next couple of years, right, uh, we'll be rolling out the Flamingo class of uh, quantum chips that will take us into the thousands of qubits. And then in 2029, we expect to deploy the Stirling class of um, processors that will take us into tens of thousands of qubits. And by the time we get to Blue J, right, in the less than 10 years from now, we expect to be easily into the hundreds of thousands of qubits, right? Uh, and that's a completely different regime altogether. In terms of researchers around the world, right, using our technology seriously, we remain uh, absolute right pole position right uh, we are very entrenched um, in the research community right uh, far more so than other of our competitors in the marketplace so now you may ask the question what can I actually do with a quantum computer today right we are at 133 qubits right last year we are 127 so we are currently in the, in the era of quantum utility right uh, what quantum utility really means is that we have already demonstrated that today's quantum computer, even though it's a little bit noisy, it's not entirely perfect, but it's really more than capable of producing more precise results than the best brute force classical methods today. And this was demonstrated in 2023. Uh, IBM Research, together with uh, researchers from the U uh, University of California, Berkeley, right, we published this utility paper we call Cutting Through the Noise where we have shown that using an Ising Hamiltonian model, we could simulate magnetic spins right, uh, through spinning electrons. Right? And this was a very tough problem, but you can see in the green line, right, the IBM results was right smack in the middle of all of the best classical simulations. Right? So this gives us a lot of confidence that we are already very, having a very capable technology. And to extend that further, Right, um, we have this collaboration with Riken, right, using a combination of IBM's QPU together with Riken's uh, Fugaku class supercomputer. We've been able to combine right these two technologies to simulate chemistry beyond brute force critical. Right, so this is a, um, a four ions, a four ions, a four sulfur. This is a protein that basically exists in all of you know, all living mechanisms. So this is a very uh, powerful right, simulations that hopefully will unlock a lot of um, you know, healthcare potentials, right, chemistry potentials, right? and this is just one example of many more research that's going on around the world. And of course, right, IBM is not just researching into the hardware and software. Right? We understand that this is a completely different paradigm of computing. We need to be able to reskill, upskill right, our entire workforce in order to grow this quantum industry. So IBM, in 2017, we also created this uh, network called the IBM Quantum Network. Right? And the purpose of the IBM Quantum Network is really to bring like-minded communities together, connect them, learn together, discover together these amazing technologies. And today, we are well over 250 members strong, right? consisting of some of the leading universities and research institutions around the world, right? including some of the Fortune 100 companies, right, and a whole bunch of startups that's you know, investing in the quantum space as well. And I encourage you to continue to do so as well. So let me change track a little bit. We've been hearing a lot about the promises of quantum computing and all the good that it can do. 
But conversely, on the other side of the house, right, uh, we also need to make the world quantum safe because there's this very famous quantum algorithm, perhaps the most famous in the world called the Shaw's algorithm, invented by Dr. Peter Shaw in the 1990s, that has the ability to do large scale factorization really, really well. So, what's the problem? The problem is that large scale factorization is something that supercomputers find very, very hard to do, right? And that is the basis of all of modern cryptography as we know it. So, I have this example here, right? A 2048 bit you know, integer number, this is basically RSA2048, the gold standard of cryptography today, right? And it would take the most powerful supercomputers today millions of years in order to break this down into the composite prime numbers that could potentially hold the key into reading the data. However, Shaw's algorithms says that this could be done by a large enough quantum computer in the hours of hours, in a matter of hours, if not minutes. So what cryptography is at risk, right? So there's symmetrical cryptography, there's asymmetrical cryptography, both are at risk, but asymmetrical cryptography is significantly more at risk. And examples of this is your RSA, your Daffy Hellman, your elliptical curve, right? And this is basically 99.5% perhaps of all of cryptography in use today. So what can a cyber criminal do, right, with a quantum computer? We call that, you're familiar with Y2K, there's a saying in the industry, Y2Q or D-Day or Q-Day, I'm sorry, right? Uh, so these are, rel these are date lines, right? But uh, the problem with Q-Day, Y2Q is that it's not 1999, December 31st, 2359. We do not know when this day will happen. We know it's coming soon, right? Uh, but we will not know exactly when, right? And when that happens, cyber criminals will be able to decrypt your data, disrupt your business, manipulate signatures, right? And do a lot of harm. However, this risk does not exist in the future. The risk exists now, right? Because there's an, act there's an attack vector known as the harvest now and decrypt later attack, which means that bad actors can harvest your information today. And there's a time value to data, for example, if bad actors decrypt my Amazon transaction right, 10 years from now, so what? But what about the blueprints for a nuclear submarine? Your most important research IP that exists within your company, pharmaceutical, for example, right, the blueprints to the security in the Boeing 747, right, your ability to take down the print right, offline remotely, right, those are incredible amount of harm. Right, that could exist right, through this harvest now and decrypt later attack. So it's vitally important that the migration to post cryptography happens as soon as possible. So I've been painting a story of fear, right? and I'm not saying that this is a doomsday. Right? The good news is that the solution is already known. Right? We have a solution, right? so there's no need to panic. Right? And the brightest minds in the world, the cryptographers, NIS, the National Institute of Science and Technology has been working on this problem together with IBM and a lot of other researchers around the world for more than a decade. In 2016, NIS put out a call for proposal to have you know, cryptographers propose, cryptographers propose right, a cryptography that protects against a quantum attack. Right? And IBM, together with many others, submitted 82 proposals right, and um, went through four rounds. And finally, in August of this year, Right, NIS announced the FIPS 203, 204, 205, post-quantum cryptography. This is the first set of many to come. And as a matter of pride that in IBM, we contributed to FIPS 203 and 204, right? and the researchers that contributed to FIPS 205 have quit their university and joined IBM. And we do expect Falcon, another IBM invention, right, to be fully FIPS certified before the end of the year. So these are the four standards that will be the first of many to come that industries will need to migrate into to replace the RSAs, the Daffy Hellmans, right, and, and whatnot of the world. So what are government agencies thinking about it, right? So governments around the world, I've been in conversation with many of them, are trying to respond, react. I guess the US government is probably the first in the world to legislate compliance to this new set of PQC, 
right? And this is a recommendation by the commercial arm of NSA, right? That says that if you want to do business with the US federal government, you need to be PQC compliant by 2030. So there's a timeline in place and many other governments around the world, right? Including in, in Singapore, right? And, you know, in ASEAN, that's really thinking about how should I prepare my nation, my industry, my national critical infrastructure, right? Towards the compliance to post-quantum cryptography. So in IBM, we have a roadmap as well, right? So we work hard with NIST nice since 2016 and beyond, right? Uh, because we are fully confident in the um, resistance of our codes against quantum attacks, we rolled out uh, our own um, uh, set of uh, cryptography in 2019, right? In our tape libraries, right? The IBM cloud is completely quantum safe. The Z16 is the first mainframe to be completely quantum safe. And we do expect more of our IBM products, hardware and software to be compliant to quantum safe in time to come. And we're not just doing this for ourselves, right? Uh, in IBM, we also participate in consortiums around the world, such as GSMA, the Mobile Payment Association of Asia, and many others, right, that helps to drive the adoptions, right, of uh, PQC, right, uh, as soon as possible. In addition, we have a full fresh uh, consultancy practice now, right, to help uh, advise customers in terms of how do you assess, roadmap, and plan out your uh, migration to uh, PQC, right? We also have rolled out technologies, right, uh, the automations to help customers migrate to this um, quantum safe as well, right? So some examples of this uh, uh, technology includes our, um, you know, quantum safe explorer. Right, for the discovery of source code in a static form, right, if you are an application developer. We also have a, a quantum safe, a Guardian, a Gu Ivan Guardian quantum safe, right, uh, to help you discover right, the interactions of uh, cryptography within and outside of your network. And as well as a quantum safe remedi remediator, right, so the quantum safe remediator is uh, consisting of several, right, 16 uh, remediation patterns that include uh, a quantum safe VPN, uh, adaptive proxies, and so on and so forth. So I think that brings me back to the, the end of my presentation, right? Um, I think this is an emerging area. There is certainly a lot of investment in this space. We do expect quantum to be another one of those internet moments, steam engine moments, Right, that will propel right, the industry into this space. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I'll be around for the rest of the session. Feel free to reach out to me. Right, thank you very much.